Why you call me too deep? I think I'm dying here, man. Welcome to the 3B Video Deep Cut Podcast. Watch if you move, take a few notes. <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> Aw, yeah, it's that time again for another bi-weekly podcast with your hosts, Rotten Roger DeMarco and... The National Guard, ready to take this fella to a maximum security facility where he'll stay till the day he dies. This is evil, and I will never die. Evil will never die. Oh boy, that's right. Here we are, another two weeks down the road, another... Seems longer. Film. (laughs) Yeah, it really does. Another film... Further in the franchise, well, as you know, for the listeners, uh, everything's going as planned. It's another bi-weekly episode, but uh, yeah. in real life, we have uh, uh, taken a sabbatical so that we could film many sequences in our very own slasher film, Tapehead, The Return of Jacob Cobb. And, uh, you know, you went through a sickness. Oh, wow. Oh, Just... Rough, rough couple of weeks for all of us involved. and uh, That's why we bank ahead, so we don't do anything right now. Mm-hmm. And so now we finally are at a spot where we can get to the next entry in this franchise. And uh, you know what? We might have had more time preparing for this podcast than they did making this movie. Because it seems you like... You shush. They, they spent a year to get this... Or six months... Okay, three months... Yeah. Three months. All right, they beat us by 30 days. <laughs> they had a solid two weeks of planning. Uh, and this movie, in my opinion, suffers a little bit from it. And, uh, you know, we'll get into that in this hour. But, uh, Evil, you want to give the good folks out there in Internet land a brief plot synopsis so we can start talking about the no plot <laughs> synopsis. I'm burying the lead a little bit. All right, yeah, we're talking Halloween 5. This is where Michael Myers goes full country. And it takes place one year after our previous film, almost to the day where Michael's going to resume his killing streak, trying to just murderize this little girl. But we have crazed Dr. Loomis ready to stop him and <laughs> suffer a heart attack, a stroke. I, I'm not sure... Or just a just a pass out. I don't know. And we get a director and f- and film writers who made up a story, and they're like, "It's up to the next guy to figure out what the hell the, where this story is going." Not our problem. Mm. <laughs> Where's our paycheck? See you later. That's a Halloween six problem. Fuck y'all. Uh, <laughs> boy, yes, boy, howdy. Okay, so let's just jump right in. I will jump. I will jump back in at you. I uh, rewatching this compared. I can distinctly remember comparing to like the first few times I watched this, which does not feel like 1989. Uh, this takes took place a year after the the last one, mm-hmm. and I really don't feel like this is Batman season, but it should be Batman movie season. But I do not remember a lot of like small shit in this movie. The first several times, like renting it as opposed to watching it on Blu-ray. And uh, streaming on Shudder. Shudder. Like, I, I remember the man in black. I do not remember any of the tattoo being shown at all. Really? No, yeah. This is this is the beginning of it. This is... I don't remember that at all, watching it initially. <laughs> Nor do I remember the score to the cops. Oh, uh, 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 uh. It's so bad. Do not remember that at all. Mm-hmm. So I, I got some Mandela effectness to this movie. Mm. That's my biggest gripe with the cops is because I like them as comedic relief, but I hate that score. Like if the score had been played straight, fine, you know, which is what basically they did in Halloween 2018. That's sort of an homage to these two cops, but it doesn't have stupid fucking circus music behind it. And it works. Oh yeah. So, Halloween 2018 saw Halloween five. was like, we're doing all this better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, So let's start uh, linear. Let's start at the very beginning, which is where my very first gripe happens because uh, you can tell this is a very nonsensical way to just make something happen. Uh, Michael Myers is blown to smithereens, as Evil likes to say. That's one of our five-cent words we love to throw out every once in a while. You don't get to use smithereens often, so when you You get to... You really don't. Yeah, it's it's still fun. (laughs) Be a kid and have fun with your words. 
Yeah, smithereens is like a Looney Tunes word. When at so your day job do you get to use smithereens? I've been working at my day <laughs> job for almost 20 years. Not once have I been able to use smithereens. I sign up for 3B <laughs> video. I can do that shit fucking weekly. Daily if we want Daily, to. Daily, nightly, so and ever so rightly. He's blown to shit and then gets Down swept a away. Shaft. Swept away by the current, which I love uh, the invention of high definition so I can see that fishing line just yoinking at his fucking overalls but uh uh you know keeping him safe he's in a little harness or whatever but so he drifts downstream and collapses at some bird keeping hermit's shack travis and travis the, crabtree i believe and the bird keeping hermit keeps him on his bed for a year a year uh, no yeah okay that, why who I don't even. I don't even have. I have a harder time believing a homeless man keeps that kind of camp for a solid <laughs> year. Like, right. Don't they I'm shift like, these guys around every so many months to make the area look a little bit nicer? Like, look, we got him the fuck out. He'll be back in probably eight months, but he's out for right now. Apparently, mm-hmm. this dude also did not hear like bombs and the police showing up. Hey, speaking of the police showing up, yeah. Yeah, they're here right now. Crazy. I live right by the. I live right by the police station, so I don't hear the score, but I hear them coming through. He's not human. But this we, guy. We have we have this homeless man who who takes him in for a year, yeah, and doesn't hear bombs going off like they no. literally dynamite this hole that he falls in, <laughs> and just leaves him there for a year. There's shit in my basement that gets left around for a year. Mm-hmm. But, not a person. Yeah, none of them are human beings. I move my mannequins around more than around more often than this guy does. He would have bed sores. He would, he would be atrophied as fuck because he literally lays there for a year. So here's the here's the thing. Then then this homeless man has 365 chances to tell someone anybody. I got this dude sleeping on my fucking bed. Doesn't like, change him or nothing. He's still in the same <laughs> clothes. And he takes his ma- takes his mask off. At least that. He goes, mm-hmm. eh, well, that's enough. Like Okay, so he also poops and pees. Like, that's just nature, right? So, like, is he just sitting in a year worth of his own shit? Like, yeah, he's shitting out that dog that he ate in 1978. <laughs> Ten years later, just, he's still digesting it. We don't know that he eats anything after uh, his second escape from, right. from uh, medical care. <laughs> just imagine the fucking homeless guy, like, fucking spoon feeding him chicken noodle soup or something like i just i don't you then know, it, then again it, then it should be danny trejo feeding him mm-hmm. baby food and then he's you were i was good to you mikey i was good to you ah uh, we'll get to that but you know so here we are we're fucking eight minutes into this podcast and we're on our very first gripe which is uh, you know you put the 3b video lenses on the adult lenses on and this shit makes zero fucking sense and then let's move on to my next issue like, is what, the next scene <laughs> yeah literally the next scene so jamie has a dream of her killing her stepmother foster mother foster and mother. then is 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 woken up and you know you're having another one of your dreams um and i've always kind of had a, an issue with this like is this them retroactively saying she did not kill her mother but she went catatonic and oh yeah she they, keeps they're dream- totally backstepping they're like they she wounded her but she didn't kill her. Like, mm-hmm. Definitely another s- symptom of like they're pulling back on shit that the previous movie set up. They're like, ah, I don't know if we could do that. But I thought yeah. you were totally going with the like medical aspect of like she can't breathe. We got to move her to the ER. Trach, <laughs> give her a trach. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> I've watched Scrubs. They do that shit pretty much anywhere. They don't have to mm-hmm. take you to the ER to set you up with the trach. Hey, and man, of course. Maybe- 1989 was different. <laughs> yeah, medicine was not was more of a superstition <laughs> than a practice. And then, of course, we have the, right before they're getting ready to slice this girl's neck open. Who else but Doctor right. Loomis just lurking around this hospital, waiting for shit to go down, just it, waiting. It, yeah, uh, happenstance. You know, uh, Doctor Loomis literally just waiting in the waiting room until. He hears like her room number get called for an emergency. Like, like he, what? I'm sure he just he's just like Michael. He just is sitting in his home office for the year, and probably around like October 15th, 
he starts getting his shit ready and packs up and <laughs> is just waiting in the lobby of this hospital or in his car, just eating yeah. pistachio peanuts and like throwing them out the window. <laughs> oh, any minute now, Jamie's going <laughs> to start freaking the fuck out. Uh, it's so ridiculous. So utterly insane. But, uh, you know, as a kid, which we talked about when we talked about all the other previous Halloween films, a lot of this stuff you don't question. And as a kid, and you even have a Loomis tattoo, and I'm going to get a Loomis tattoo. Oh, yeah. We love us some Dr. Loomis. But as a kid, you don't question how absolutely inept or fucking Looney Tunes this fella is. And as an adult, you're like... What is happening how right now? How is this now? man still... How is he not behind bars? <laughs> he should be the one locked up at the end of this movie, not Michael. Mm -hmm. Now, and I also... Uh, this is a, a small elephant in the room, but nonetheless, it's still an elephant in the room. Uh, two weeks ago, we talked about the mask of the part four uh, Michael Myers and how a lot of people have an issue with that. And you and I don't, really. This mask, however... I truly despise. I really? think this I is like, the... I, I don't mind this mask. I think it's all right. It looks like Nicolas Cage. It's got a big, wide neck. Nicolas Cage. And, you know, slicked back hair. It's a real big old snozzola that looks like they, you know, they added to ah, it. I'll switch you up. Uh, I'll give it more of a Belushi. It looks like a Jim Belushi. Mm, take, okay. Jim, well, just... take Jim Belushi and real men and paint his face white, and then you got this, and extend mm. his neck to pass his collarbone, then you got it. Yeah. I really dislike this mask. Uh, I think that's like one of the like hardest hurdles to get over. Also, the fact that this movie doesn't really have a story. They fucking fake the Myers house, yada yada. But uh, boy, do I I hate the look of Michael in this movie. But and I but you probably I bet you're on the other side though. You probably do enjoy Don Shanks' work, the man behind the mask. Mm, a little too robotic. Really? A little too robotic, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, so here's the, you know. Would he make a good he, Jason? Maybe, you know. Because this, this is big. This is borderline a, a Friday the 13th movie disguised as Halloween. Oh, yeah, he's a tank, right? But uh, I suppose I prefer George P. Wilbur, you know, four and six forever. But, uh, man, they, they do another cardinal sin as far as you and I are concerned. They take the most likable character from part four and just kill her within the first 20 minutes of this movie and uh, that really sucks. That's one of those ones like the deaths that stings when they kill Rachel. You kind of need her because who else do we have? We got the stuttering kid. We've got it's Tina. It's hit by a car. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which and I didn't we've got realize. Dr. Loomis. I did not realize as a child that they he totally fucking like just smashes into this kid with a vehicle because it's cut <laughs> so weird. But Mows him yeah, down. they totally yeah. Michael just just plows over this kid with a car. <laughs> but I I may stand alone in this, but I've always loved Tina. Oh no, I like Tina as well. Tina is is to me. I enjoy her way more. Than Rachel. Uh, Rachel was a good stinger kill. Like, oh shit, Rachel's down. But mm -hmm. I was, I'm, I've always been on board with Tina. Tina oh, all immediately gets my brown panty achievement and goes down in the Roger DeMarco fashion too, uh, mm -hmm. dying on her shield. But I've always loved Tina. I totally, I, my older sibling had friends that I thought kind of embodied the spirit of Tina. Like, oh, she's cool. I like her. Yeah, and, and it's funny because the general consensus of the internet is she's one of the worst characters of all time. And it, I feel like you and I both kind of, whenever that happens, we're like, really? They're not that bad. Whichever character it might be, like uh, going back to Texas Chainsaw Massacre, like Franklin. I like Franklin. Now, so, the blonde dude that's, spits. that's with T Tamara Glenn, yeah, that guy fucking sucks. Um, oh, God, he's terrible. <laughs> his fucking laugh. And nothing like, like, I'm totally on board with the other Michael in the Leather Jackets boat when, the yes, yeah, Spitz, he takes, he steals two cases, two cases of beer from his local, uh, gosh, what, mom and pop grocery stop. Yeah, the quick stop he's working at. So, 48 beers, okay? 
loads them into Michael's car, and he's like, all right, now don't drink them all before, you know, we get there. And he just gives him this, fu- like, fucking idiot look. And I'm like, yeah, he's a, f- yeah, that's fucking stupid. 48 beers? You expect this guy to drink 48 fucking beers before <laughs> tonight? Right. I was like, he'll be dead. <laughs> he will die. I was well, like, all he's, of you will be dead. I was like, he's, I like, I guess they're not teenagers or, gosh, what would you throw up, 19? What, a 19 yeah. to 21 demographic on this yeah, one? Yeah, something like that. But he, still, I was like. 48 beers. No. He's got a mm-hmm. lot more problems on his hand if he's drinking 48 beers in like a six hour window. <laughs> like, this he's guy pro, fucking man. sucks. Like, he does not get stabbed quick enough in that fucking laugh. What is Tamara Glenn? Lovely gal. Met her a few mm-hmm. years ago. What did her character see in this fucking guy? I'd so, smother him. Tamara Glenn gets my brown panty award. Uh, and. Because I just rewatched it. Obviously, we kind of throw these movies on all the time, but I rewatched it earlier this morning, and I really like her character. But she doesn't have she doesn't offer the story much. Her whole arc is she's gonna she's there sleep she's gonna sleep with her boyfriend tonight. Like she's gonna lose her virginity. I'm assuming in to a, Spitz in a barn laying on straw. Mm-hmm. Well, that's Which, sometimes that's how you do it in Illinois. Yeah, yeah, very country in Illinois. <laughs> don't think I don't. I don't even think I could throw out a a number that I would be like to the to the wife. Be like, what do you think on a bed of straw? Five hundred bucks. I'll, I'll, I'll give you. I'll give you that much. Five hundred bucks <laughs> extra. You don't think so? You don't think you could? I don't think I could swindle. I definitely... Wooing is out of the question. That's why I immediately went to like, how about a price tag on top of it, you know? It's my (laughs) fantasy. No. Nothing about... All right. I don't... Nearing 40, nothing about that seems comfortable. Feet and knees (laughs) on straw and wood in (laughs) October. Late October. The end of October. In Mm -hmm. the Midwest in 1989. On straw. <laughs> all right, fine. You're shooting a bunch of holes in all of my uh, hopes and dreams. Just attempt that. Yeah, just just throw that out there to your to to, to your missus. Be like, would you? On all these circumstances, I would guarantee Megan would say yes. <sighs> well, she's a fiend, son. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, mine's more. Mine's more on the reality basis of. That's just going to hurt, not be comfortable. I'm just going to be waiting for you to finish. (laughs) (laughs) How is it? I'm ready to be done. I'm ready to be done. (laughs) There's stray cats around in here. I'm probably laying in cat shit, too. You you sound like me when I'm watching this movie. I'm ready to be done. I'm ready to be done. Uh, I don't mind this movie. Uh, We'll get the further. We'll get the ones down the road where we're completely flipped on this. But I don't mind this movie at all. Now, I don't mind it in the aspect of, like, obviously I throw it on a couple of times a year, and I... Begrudgingly, you throw it on. Yeah, well, I enjoy it, but it's just, like, in the... These fucking dogs. There's a dog in this movie. What's the the dog's name in this movie? Max? Max. Max. Max the dog. But in the grand scheme of things, when it comes to the execution of this film... I just feel like it's such a lackluster entry in the franchise to where if I'm going to watch any film of the franchise, I nine times out of ten, I skim over this one. So, I mean, yeah, if you're looking at it that way, like, so what's the plot? And they're like, I don't know. You just put it on and just don't think about anything. But if you think about stuff, it's like, yeah, he, he gets up after a year. He decides he still wants to kill his niece. So he kills the older sibling, foster sister of the niece, and then the foster sister's best friend, who has no idea about the shit that took place a year ago. None of these folks have any idea what took place a year ago. Right. Are all of a sudden in the mix, and one of them is protecting the foster sister, dead foster sister's sibling, who is mute for, I guess, a year, and suddenly starts learning to talk again out of the blue and also yeah. shares a psychic link with Michael and yep. at the See, same time to- at, the, at the same I'm, I'm not done yet at the same time 
uh, has the ability to control or stop the quote unquote rage of Michael Myers, Mm -hmm. which is something we've not heard about until now that she can stop the rage. See, these are all shoehorned ideas that I just absolutely despise. Uh, First of all, like we talked about it. Even Loomis doesn't know what's going on. He's like, he he dug up a casket. What's he going to do with that? I don't right. think any of us know. We don't even know. Nope. But, you know, we talked about it two weeks ago. Huh? I'm not necessarily the biggest. Uh, like, I like Danielle Harris, but I, uh, I'm not the biggest fan of Danielle Harris. So for her to essentially be the lead in this movie, but for her to not be able to talk and <laughs> do that fucking, like, stuttery T- and then nah. all this whine, like... I hate it. You know, I, I'm like, how are you my lead? Like, I I want you to get fucking slaughtered right now. You're annoying the shit out of me, which is not her fault. It's this lackluster story. But, uh, you know, um, I just. <laughs> which on top of that, I like how. So how old is Jamie and her pirate roadkill buddy friend? <laughs> Roadkill buddy. Roadkill buddy. I'd say 10. I'd say 10. 10, okay. We, we determined so, they were like 8 or 9 in in uh, the last movie, and so we're a year later. Okay, so I'll even bump you to 11. Okay. Do you... How... I, I, already, I already know the answer on my end, but like, do you feel or do you feel that your kids at the age of 11 could navigate in the middle of the night from... Let's say home base to an to the tower farm. So let's say nope. <laughs> let's say I don't even I don't even know what the point of origin would be. Five to, miles, maybe. Yeah, this is walk five five to ten miles in the dark in the middle of the night and know where we're going. Not a chance in hell. Not a chance in hell. My daughter will walk to Dollar General and call for a ride back. How do I get home? I'm at the corner first (laughs) and first. How does a street intersect with itself? I must be at the nexus of the universe. No, not a chance. Neither kid. They'd be so... That's the difference with kids today, man. Kids in 1989 (laughs) could walk five miles to a a Halloween (laughs) party and know what the fuck's up. Kids today don't know shit. Mm -hmm. Well, they'd probably... Kids today would probably use some sort of uh, GPS... Yeah. Okay. Would cops be willing to provide trans transpo for probably some underage kids to a drinking Halloween party at this tower farm? Which at first this party in this party supposed to take place at Rachel's, Mm -hmm. and then Rachel is killed and then is missing, and then nobody, including Daniel Harris, doesn't even ask like, "Hey, where is Rachel at?" Yeah. No one. So yeah, supposed to take place there. And then they uh, they abandon that when they the two uh, quasi leads Tamara Tamara Glenn and uh, uh, what why why am I blanking on her name Tina Tina go there and find that she's not there. Um, <clears throat> but I I do want to talk about another uh, one of my f- favorite horror tropes that we tropes yeah that we that we're doing in this Halloween in particular. Not so much any of the other Halloweens, but this one in particular. And uh, this was a staple in late 80s slashers, and that is the body layer. Michael Myers doesn't necessarily do a body layer. He normally leaves bodies in very Jason-esque spots, you know, to, to creep you out or whatever. But in this movie in particular, in the attic of the Myers house, he has taken every single person he's murdered and set them up. Uh, you know, a la like a fucking, party. Yeah, like my uh, bloody bur- or not bloody birthday, but like happy birthday to me. Uh, fucking uh, whatever. Uh, Which how gradu- graduation how, day? How goddamn annoying would that be? Like if you put that in a video game, I'd be like, ugh. Every kill, I gotta drag this fucker all the way back to the fucking Myers <laughs> house undetected, and then drag them not up one flight of stairs, but to the fucking attic. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. And the coffin too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very. Um. Just put that shit on the main floor, Mike. 
I, I feel like when they made this movie, they were like, well, what, what's being done now? Like, what's, you know, what's something that other slashers are doing? It, it became around this time, especially with Halloween five. I feel like Halloween was the trendsetter that kind of jump started slashers. And, you know, uh, I'm sure you agree with me on that front. Like the modern slasher got all of its beats from Halloween and then Friday the 13th took it up a notch with a little bit of gore. But by the time we get to 89 and we're on Halloween 5, we've got Halloween writers and directors looking at other slashers going, what are they doing? Uh, and it's a weird, like, it, it just oh, feels is, weird. This is the most Friday the 13th Halloween movies that I've ever seen. Yeah, this is imitation crab. You know what I mean? Like, this is like, this ain't quite Even to the crab use meat. of... Even to the use of Friday the 13th-esque weapons of a pitchfork and a scythe. Mm-hmm. Trick or trog. <laughs> okay, now that probably is, will never not be funny, is that right. dude is so, and that, that other Michael is so anal retentive about his own car <laughs> that that Mike grabs the fucking garden tool from Nightmare on Elm Street and scrapes it down the side of his car <laughs> just just in his rear view mirror view so he can just see it just fucking his car up like let me make sure I do this before I s just throw this into this guy's face alright asshole you wanna play uh, which by the way in my opinion probably the best kill in this movie uh, not a lot of great kills oh my gosh Tamara that's about Glenn the only one I can see yeah, Tamara Glenn's off screen. Spitz gets the uh, pitchfork to the back. Not fast enough. That's not enough. Rachel gets stabbed in the chest. The cops get uh, who knows what the fuck. Off screen. You know, a lot of off screen. Uh, stuttering Stanley gets run over by the car. <laughs> Fucking hilarious as an adult. <laughs> I'm pretty, you know, pretty uh, light when it comes to uh, on screen violence. Oh, you got, you got Roger Pedactor getting hung outside the new Myers house. Mm hmm. Which, uh,. Spoiler alert, uh, that was going to be my prop for the prop game, was that fucking ladder. <laughs> oh, I was like, was Roger Pedactor? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, which, okay, so despite the fact that that house looks like shit. You know, I didn't, I did not question it in, in when I saw it the first time. Probably because I was not as, I was more casual with my uh, Halloween watching, like I knew it, but I wasn't like, Elm Street knew it, knew it, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, okay, I so just accepted, all right, that's the house. Yeah, well, just imagine, you know, it's a it's a Elm Street movie, and then all of a sudden the fucking they house has, like, house. <laughs> gold onions on the fucking, you know what I mean, the top, and, like, Got the spiral no. scared staircase and shit to an upper floor, yeah, laundry like, shoots. Immediately, like, nope, nope, that's not my house, and uh, it's, it's all of those things that pile up for me that makes me go, well, obviously the people who made this movie didn't care enough. You know what I mean? Like, uh, you can say what you want about Halloween kills, but if you look at how painstakingly they recreated that house, you know what I mean? Like, Oh yeah. Compare that care rate to this movie's care rate. Like, didn't yeah. even, you all didn't even try. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, so, I mean, again, I like this movie, but, and Good all this being said, we've not even mentioned. I didn't even mention in the in the plot synopsis, the Man in Black. Mm hmm. Which I I remember the Man in Black. I do remember that. So I didn't Mandela affect the Man in Black. But yeah, the Man in Black is something they put in. They're like, ah, we don't know who the fuck he is. Yeah. So that's the other thing. Uh, this is a prime example of, and and when you watch it, you can really feel it is um, the fact that they were literally writing pages as they were going because this movie has ending-itis, okay? We have the Tower Farm ending. Yeah. We have, we have the Myers House ending, and then we have the police station ending. And they which, all take, like, 20 minutes of the movie. like Which I did notice watching the last time I did watch it when Michael is in the woods and Loomis is telling him to go to the house. Yeah. You can totally see him just standing there staring at, at Loomis. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, on the VHS and shit, and I was like, he could be anywhere out there. <laughs> Creepy. <laughs> but watching the Blu-ray, I'm like, he's right fucking there. Like, Loomis, like shoot him, he's right in. there. 
<laughs> I was like, he's looking right at you. I was like, there's maybe 300 feet distance between the two of them. Like, he's just standing there staring at him. Like, he's, he's, he's right there. This is not like Leatherface Part 3 where yeah. like, oh shit, you can't see him walking towards him. No, he's right fucking there. Mm-hmm. So, and that's the other thing about the the climax or the second climax of this film. The house. is Yeah, so you've got to assume that uh, once Loomis knew that Michael was after Jamie... That he went to this house. First of all, he had to go to a hardware store and buy this giant fucking chain net. Uh, and, Hang you know, that up he, on his own because this is independent from the cops. He did not ask Roger Protector to help him with this shit. So imagine. Bought a tr- tranquilizer gun. Imagine like a yeah, 65, 70 year old Loomis hanging up like, let's say, a 400 pound chain net overhead. And I don't know where the fuck you go to the zoo and steal a train gun. Right. Where the hell do you buy a train gun? And why a train gun? Why not just a shotgun? Why not an elephant gun? Why a tranquilizer gun? Why does he think if something with stopping and killing power, if that doesn't work, why does he think, well, this will put him to sleep? Why would that Thorazine. work? He'll barely be able to stand up. That's the idea. Yeah, that's when he's that's when he was still considering him human. Evil, but yeah. human. He's saying he's not human. No, after part two, he is quote unquote not human. So he's why does elephant. he think that a trank gun will put him to sleep? <laughs> he's a grizzly bear. Um but just imagine this. Imagine him with like a ladder and like, you know, getting one corner of the chain tucked up this and then moving to the next one and then that one falling down i can just imagine him like oh damn and this is all done in theory this all has to be done before shit goes south at the tower farm because from the tower farm they go to the house to where he sets up to where the police are going to set up this entire sting operation that he Mm -hmm. already pre-knows that Mm -hmm. as soon as somebody has a vision they're gonna fuck they're gonna fuck off and then he'll show up and then his plan can take effect. Yeah. Well, and also, simultaneous, t- this is where it's so muddy. I mean, obviously, these movies are muddy, but simultaneous to Loomis hanging up his chain net, Michael had to have been there bringing in a coffin and all the dead bodies. Like, these two motherfuckers are just missing each other. Like, where's the scene of that? Oh, like, that Loomis def- dra- that's ex- dragging that's, in the chain. That should be that should be a scene. It's just Loomis completely oblivious to Michael dragging a casket up the flight of stairs behind him. Thumping on every step. Well, he's just... Eh, eh. Like, yeah, on a ladder overhead, like, trying to pin this fucking, like... Just like, like Nancy, like, trying to use, like, uh, fucking clothespin hangers and a sledgehammer. Like, hey, I just hang this up here, and I can pull it. I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Oh, God. It's so... And then... So, Loomis is completely off of his fucking rocker, and... Uh, he's been off know, it for a long time, but he's... Oh, yeah. He just, he just embraced the insanity by part five. And using Jamie as bait, right? As a kid, I'm like, you fucking asshole. Like, I'm thinking he's literally going to give Jamie to Michael. Catch the little and, girl, Michael. Yeah, catch the little girl. Play the game. Catch the little girl. It's, 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 it's almost time to play the game. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. And, like, it's always that way. It always pans out that way with... Like you said, there's a there's a supposed Michael sighting, so every cop leaves except for Roger Pedactor, uh, you know, and that now you'll come, won't you, Michael? Like, now you come. Just so ridiculous. But I love I love that oh that other vision by the way that we completely blew past that uh, Jamie has a vision that. Tina is in the car with the other Michael, but he's wearing mm-hmm. a different mask, and Tina thinks it's her Michael, and they're out the co- co- course. Michael Myers will drive this bitch to go get cigarettes at a gas station. <laughs> Rather than and, just stab the shit out of her. Yeah, because the fuck. Mm-hmm. And they're outside the gas station, and this is one of the few spots where Jamie can see 
shit that Michael is seeing. We see it a little bit earlier with the dog, but we get it here again where she can see him looking at the gas station. And there's mm-hmm. a fucking painting of a f- big titty woman with cookies. <laughs> which I love the de- one of the deputies knows exactly where they where they're talking about big cookie <laughs> woman cuz I'm sure that's ex- I'm, I totally flash back to like super troopers like the dude looking like Mac looking at the lips on the billboard just jerking off like oh <laughs> he's used that billboard more than a few times on his quote unquote stakeout nights trying to catch Dale's gas station. Fifth and Main, or what the fuck ever. Whacked yeah. off to that lady a hundred times. I know exactly the big cookie woman. <laughs> While eating cookies and crying. like <laughs> That was one time I was drunk and it was Valentine's Day. <laughs> a lot of self-loathing going on in the Haddonfield uh, Police Department. Which, that's the <sighs> other, like... I did like that. I liked, I liked bringing back uh, the sheriff. And again, oh, yeah. We had a, yeah, we had, I, and I liked him. I liked him a lot. He's good. And we had a, and twice they've done this now where they brought a sheriff back that has a dead daughter and they're like, "Do you forget what happened last year? Your own no, daughter <laughs> rammed with a shotgun in your own house. Yeah, no, must grass feel like even, a bitch. <laughs> grass isn't even growing on her grave yet. I didn't forget, motherfucker. Uh, she was but, such a whore. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember? She killed. He killed her." Right in your house, and then stuffed her bra under your couch. <laughs> um, I don't know where I was going <laughs> now after the the titty talk. Uh, how how Because she took zing. that bra off, and the, during the that scene with Grady, and just shoved that shit under the couch. Yep. So I'm just, <laughs> I like the assumption of like he felt her up, and then put her bra under the couch for you to find later. How does that feel, Mika? Does you feel meek? Two movies in a row where we get a police station assault, but completely off camera. Uh, Fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, fuck you. Uh, You know, the first movie we get Ah. the aftermath of Michael Myers killing everybody. This this movie we get the aftermath of us. uh, I'm assuming the Man in Black and Michael Myers. Oh, I, I didn't expect Michael Myers part of that. I just expect, in my mind, I just picture the man in black with a Tommy gun. Oh, yeah. He's definitely got a machine gun. But I want, I you know, I'm, I'm imagining that the budget was stretched so fucking thin and they were shooting so fucking fast that they couldn't afford, you know, just everybody in oh, cop a, uniforms, lay down, we'll dump some blood on that's you. That's a you know? big fucking action scene. You're like, we ain't got time for yeah. that shit. Mm-hmm. We know but that now. I like, just fill the room with smoke. <laughs> Sound yeah. effects were fine. Yeah. Uh, here's my other, uh, it's just a small gripe. It's a small gripe about when we cut to Michael in the jail cell and he's in so fucking weird shackles. He's still wearing the mask in his jail cell, but he's playing with the chain, like with his hands, like he's like shuffling it and it annoys the shit out of me. I'm like, my. Of all the things in this movie where I'm like, Michael wouldn't do that or whatever, or that's dumb. I, like, would he really fidget with the fucking chain like a like a toddler who just got put in time out? Like, it drives me so fucking nuts. Like, no. just just sit there. Just fucking sit there. Thought process is probably like, <laughs> this is new for me. I've not experienced <laughs> this before. But we're oh, ten- shit, he was in a sanitarium for 15 years. <laughs> like, oh, it's been a while since I felt this. Like... <laughs> A year and a half ish. A year, like 13 months since I felt this. I hate it. I hate it. Uh, all right. So, yeah, with all that being said, clearly they weren't planning out ahead. So, if mm-hmm. you had your chance to do some of the rewrites, would you have done what I would think you would logically do is. You would take the homeless man out and make the make either the man in black or what ended up being the cult of thorn folks. Those are the ones that apprehend Michael at the beginning of this movie. Like they pull him out of this mine shaft and hold on to him for a year and then re-release him, and then re-edit how you have the ending to it. Like maybe have somebody on the police force just fucking leave the door unlocked or some shit and sabotage the entire police force. Like leave it just unlocked and then like. Oh, I gotta go pick up my fucking new gun. I'll see you guys in like five minutes. I'll be right back. 
I, you know, honestly, I've never really thought about how to how to rewrite the thorn movie. and the man in black in there. Yeah, I mean, I have a thorn tattoo, but I, I mean, if I had my choice, if I could go back throw in time, it, throw it on the fly. How do you rewrite rewrite this movie with the man in black and make it make more sense if you had to? Well, I mean, you're pretty spot on with having the cult. Uh, I've had time know. to think about this for a week. So. <laughs> so there is an original opening to this movie with a, a different, it's a different opening, like the Dr. Death opening where some fucking voodoo guy. Uh, voodoo magic man. Yeah, there's a whole scene. I think the Scream Factory Blu-rays have it or whatever, but where the voodoo, some voodoo guy resurrects Michael at the beginning of the movie. Um, it, I couldn't tell you because, again, I'm not the biggest Halloween 5 fan, so I don't do a lot of deep diving into Halloween 5. But I need to do um, back in deep dive if I have that ability. I, f- I feel like you do the Cult of Thorn, um, apprehending him and, and holding him for a year. Uh, and I just, I hate the whole, I hate him getting caught. So if I could change anything, it would I would almost make the ending of this movie like the beginning of Halloween 4. Like, oh, he's been tranked, he's fucking in chains, now we have to get him to the police station. Well, good luck, you know? And he fucking slaughters everyone, and Jamie's waiting at the police station, you know? And then you see, you hear police sirens in the distance, and you see police lights and shit, and like... You, you cut to where that is and it's like Jamie and Loomis coming up to all these police and it's like a bunch of dead cops and then you got Loomis and Jamie there no no and Michael's gone again and then we get another fresh start yeah, that's that's probably the strange one of the stranger parts of this movie is you get to that climax Michael's in a prison cell and Loomis isn't there mm-hmm like, this is a dude who's been on his f- fucking heels and wants to be around him 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And then once he's confined to a cell, Loomis is nowhere to be found. He's just like, yeah. well, I'm going home now. Clearly nothing could happen here. He's in jail where he belongs. They'll never transport him on Halloween again, I tell you what. Here's my thought process on that is, you know, you touched on it already about... Does Loomis have a heart attack? Does he have a stroke? Whatever. Either way, should he, he die? He is. Should yeah, he die? That's. He's beating Michael and then collapses on Michael, and then we cut to Michael in jail, right? And and Loomis is not there. So I feel like it was one of the only smart things that the filmmakers did by giving themselves an out, because they most likely they ran out of days to shoot with Loomis by the time they shot that ending. And, and they left it uh, ambiguous to where it's like, perhaps he did die while he was attempting to defeat Michael. And that way you have something that you can cut back to in Halloween 6, if need be, and say, you know, he died here. Maybe. Like. I would, yeah. I would go with it. Like, kill him Because he was old as, he was old as fuck already in 89. And he had said, like, I'll do 80 of them if, if. You know, I'll I make can. him as long as I'm breathing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, he passed away during the creation of Halloween 6. And uh, Which that he has movie has so little to do in that movie. Except in the producer's cut, they put they put a lot more of him in there. But uh, Yeah, but even... The producer's cut sucks, though, so... Even we'll still, <laughs> even still, I think you wouldn't lose anything if you just... If you let him die here... And picked up the next movie where he's he's gone. And maybe it's like delving into that, like have somebody, you know, dealing with burying him. Do that do that fucking thing everyone loves doing. Like that's where you bring in the daughter that no one ever knew Loomis had. Like right. Oh, I helped him the whole time. Like do an inspector gadget shit. Like the daughter was actually doing all the fucking work and he was just <laughs> bumbling his way through everything and made it look like he knew what he was doing. He clearly was just bumbling. I, I that's one hundred percent. Oh, he's a total <laughs> bumblefuck. Worst goddamn doctor in movie history. B- bumbler, you bumbler. Um, but you know, again, I've really, really been shitting on this movie. Uh, <laughs> I do. I, I just want to make it absolutely clear that I have fun with this movie. We we watch this movie a lot. Uh, 
but it's my least favorite. So um, I I do watch it, I, and I do all of the stuff that we've been talking about in this hour. I say out loud when I'm watching the movie. Like, I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like that. But guess what? I still put the fucker on like once every two months. Like, yep, time to watch Halloween 5. So, And I don't mind that at all. I, I go with it. We'll get into movies coming down the road here that definitely get less and less play for me that might be <laughs> sacrilege to, to some folks, but I don't give a fuck. I, I don't give a fuck. Um, but I, do, I also, I, this just came up earlier uh, this morning for me, so I'll, I'll talk a little bit about it. Um, I don't know if you've been keeping up with the Halloween Ends stuff. Ooh, because, uh, yeah, as of when this drops, we're about a little under a month away from Halloween Ends coming out. So, so I will keep this uh, discussion brief. Yeah, brief and and. Sp- and spoiler free as much as I can, but, uh, there's some certain plot aspects to the new Halloween that, um, have slightly been revealed and they did some test screenings and showed some audiences and audiences were upset and blah, blah, blah. And I don't like this. And I don't like that. And why'd you do this? And why'd you do that? Fuck them. So as a result, we are less than a month away or right at a month from the release of Halloween Ends. Are they doing reshoots? Two weeks of reshoots oh, to change some shit. That's some Nightmare because, 4 shit right there. Because some audience, uh, some test audiences were going, well, I don't like that, I don't like that. And, uh, Fuck them. And, and, I, and I'm firmly, like my feet are firmly planted in the sand of, uh, you know, you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. Like, and I used Jason Goes to Hell as my example. When Super we all Mario saw, Brothers. Right. Well, yeah, the Super Mario uh, dilemma or whatever you call it. The Mario the Super defense. Mario defense. Yes. So, but, you know, with Jason Goes to Hell, like, we were all fucking pumped to get a Jason movie. And seven minutes into the movie, he's hopping into other bodies. And we go, well, I didn't expect that. I didn't really want that. But okay. I still got a Jason movie, you know. And, and it just becomes like, well, these are things I didn't like, but I got a new Jason. And, uh... And I feel like that's the same. Like, shut up, eat your popcorn, watch your fucking movie. You, if you think you can do better, then you do better. Go make a goddamn movie, but shut the fuck up. Like, no more fan films for Halloween. Good God. <sighs> Please, let's stop the fan films. Fuck them. Let's make something original, um, which I know can be the other side of the coin, as you could say that for the filmmakers now. Stop making Halloween movies and make something original. But the point of the matter is they have the rights to Halloween and you don't and they can do whatever they want so you can sit down shut the fuck up and go home you like, get what you fucking deserve right I'm sorry to fucking take that on a little rant but I just nah. that's all right. <laughs> and if you want spoilers you're gonna have to wait a while because we will get to them because mm-hmm. that will be how we wrap up this this franchise who knows what the hell we'll do next but it seems like still even five movies in the end of the road for Halloween seems so far away. It really is. I don't even a... see the end of the road. Like, we're going to go for another 100 miles before we even get close <laughs> <laughs> to, yeah. to the end of this fucking franchise. Uh, yeah. When, um, sure. I don't even <laughs> But, yeah. Evil will never die. It, it truly will never die. Not until the grosses go down, my friend. Doesn't but matter now, even then. We've been ranting and rambling for a little while. Uh, are you ready to move on to the next segment, or you have anything else you want to bring up? Yeah, I think uh, I think we covered about everything you could possibly think of. So let's just go ahead and jump on in to speaking of hey, great segue though. Speaking of stuff that people didn't like, let's go to some test audiences for this movie right here, Halloween <laughs> Five, with the Amazon One Star reviews. Hey, it. All right, first up is Kelly K. On March 22nd, 2016, uh, one star. And she does that thing where she starts to write her shit and then realizes she's on the title. <laughs> and then just starts it all over again. So Ah, gotcha. I will admit that I was trying to find the... I will admit I was trying to find the first Halloween to watch with my husband since he's never seen it. I can't find the original Halloween on any of my apps. I randomly chose this one. <laughs> And the obs- 
what 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 shit luck <laughs> jumping into five why do you pick five <laughs> oh well let's do five <laughs> the absurdity of the movie right off the bat caused us to turn it off about two minutes wow. two minutes so jamie is still probably not even not even been stopped from being intubated yet at that point She's probably just, that's probably someone just pissed off at the aggressive pumpkin carving credits. That's the re it's the recap of part four is the yeah. first two. Yeah. Previously on Halloween. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I'm done. <laughs> if I wanted that, I'd watch fucking Halloween four. I'm watching Halloween five and I'm watching Halloween four again. Fuck you. <laughs> I have seen these movies before and they are absurd, but I really couldn't even watch this one. The fuck. <laughs> Next up is Kessel Junkie, January 4th, 2017. One star, just awful. This movie is terrible in every conceivable way. Dang. Next up is Adam. Kudos for getting the name Adam. October 25th, <laughs> 2018. So this is right in the uh, Halloween resurgence. 2015? 2018. 2018. 2018. Okay, 2018. Yeah. My mistake there. 2018. He says. One star. How does this have four stars? This movie is terrible. I have actually have tried to think of the think of things that would have made this movie worse. It's difficult. Have Rob Zombie directed? Michael could possibly <laughs> decide to give up murder and take up pottery. That's probably all. <laughs> Those two things. I, yeah, I like that he wrote a Halloween Fire review just to kind of segue in a fucking Rob Zombie dig. I would give the man props for that. Fuck you, Rob Zombie. <laughs> Sidebar can't wait for the Munsters. Uh, yeah, you can. All right. Next up is No Name. Oh. October 10th, 2020. One star. This one is great. <laughs> what? Half star for the... Uh, all right, you try to pronounce this spelling. S-T-H-I-T-A-Z-O-N. I'm, I feel like they're trying to say half star for shit shitathon, but it's shitathon that you suck and make movies cost in certain time frames. Yes, I know business, but you regularly change what is free and what costs based on demand. You're a BS <laughs> monopoly and you can pound sand if you think I care what you think of this review. You can pound sand. You can <laughs> pound sand. Is that racist? What is that supposed to be? I don't even know what the fuck that means. I don't know if about uh, pounding sand to know if that's accurate or not. I'm pounding hay. <laughs> pounding in hay. Uh. <laughs> I don't and, get it. Uh, so he's just basically mad that it I don't was know what, free. I don't know it, what the hell that is. And as much sense as that doesn't make... The last one star review makes even less sense, and I didn't even bother to have it translated from German. But it's from Annette Roffenschneid. March 23rd, 2021. Schwa sequel. <laughs> Schwa sequel. Schwa sequel. Shit? Shit? Scheiße? I don't know. Shit sequel. Probably. Probably what it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Schwa sequel. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's a schwa sequel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What do you think of Halloween 5? I just jump in with 5. I couldn't find 1, 2, 3, or 4, but I jump in with 5. And what the fuck? It starts with telling me what Halloween 4 is. It's schwa. I take a poop. I go pound <laughs> sand instead. God damn it. Is that the end of the one stars? That's the end of the one stars for Halloween oh, 5. As you shit. saw from the other guy, it's a four star rated movie. So, God damn right. People love Halloween 5? Uh, yeah, that's a question. Do people love Halloween Five? I like Halloween um, Five. It's fine. That's you know, that's as much as uh, as I'll give it. Is I'll go it's to fine. I'll go to places that you would think is a slap in the face. I will go to Halloween Five before I go to Halloween Two. Oof, that's crazy. Oh yeah, you're a crazy person. Hey, I'm a wild card. You're off off the chain. <laughs> I'm a complicated As guy. As the young kids say, yeah. <laughs> That's off the heezy. I am I way <laughs> off a of heezy. 
I'm off the henny. <laughs> Is that what you're sipping on? I'm honey? sipping on a little al 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 alcohol. Now I sound <laughs> like the pirate kid ran over by a car. <laughs> I'm gonna drink some a a alcohol at the t Tower Farm. Fucking kid. You 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 don't even know where she is, B but I do. Volkswagen. Volkswagen. <laughs> Whoa. Well, that fucking kid. Well, At least he doesn't stutter anymore. <laughs> <laughs> he made the tires stutter. <laughs> <laughs> he fucking busted the shit out of that turn signal light cover. Do you cover. think he screams with a stutter? Ah! <laughs> ah, 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 ah. And then ah, it's legal. Like, he's been hit by a car. He's on the ground. They're like, you'll be all right. I'll come back for you. <laughs> he was a 10-year-old struck by a car. <laughs> he gone. <laughs> Yeah. I'm not trying to be offensive towards anyone with a stutter, because I also have a slight stutter every once in a while. So fuck that. It's a I movie. He it. doesn't have a real stutter. We can make fun of a fake stutter. It's like someone <laughs> it's like making fun of somebody with a shit accent that doesn't have an accent where they're supposed to be from. Like Keanu Reeves trying to have a British accent in Dracula. Shit's funny. <laughs> we can make fun of it because he's not fucking British. Because I think that's a Tom Segura joke too. Like a British lady that was born and raised in a small British town, never left it, had a head injury, and because of that head injury, now speaks with an Asian accent. Head injury, not funny, but a British lady speaking with an Asian accent? Not racist, but funny. <laughs> Would you Damn like right. a cup of tea? <laughs> oh, me rack of tea. <laughs> not racist funny because it's an accent that she acquired but due to a head injury not natural almost like acting same thing there you go <laughs> well now that we're done with the amazon one star reviews evil what does that mean let's play a game michael no not kill the little girl it's just the game it's time to play the game Time to play the game! It's all about the game. And how you play it? I said, stop the goddamn car. I want a pack of cigarettes. <laughs> oh, that is excellent. That's right. It is time to play the game. And if you're new here, welcome. And you're probably scratching your head asking yourself, what is the game? Well, the game is a deep cut in and of itself where you have to pick a prop from the movie that we are covering, but it cannot be a well-known prop. So since we're covering the Halloween franchise, you can't say Michael Myers' mask, his coveralls, his butcher knife, any of that bullshit. That's all low-hanging fruit. So, as Evil likes to say, you gotta go deep... Or get hit by a fucking car by the tower farm. <laughs> smoosh, smoosh. <laughs> that kid, he gone. Um, all right, dude. So I will go first. It's been a hot minute, I feel, since we've actually recorded. And I'm feeling really good. I've got the movie fresh, fresh, fresh in my brain. Uh, there's plenty of props to pick from. But I saw one and yes. went, ah, there it is. And it's it's possible that you and I picked the same prop. We've never done it before, so it's possible. Nope. Uh, my prop, 100%, is the dead dog prop of Max that's hanging up in the attic. <laughs> oh, it's so good. That's a real bad dead dog prop, too, by the way. That <laughs> looks like a fucking pound puppy, like, starched. <laughs> and nobody knows dead dog props like 3B Video Deep Cut Podcast No them dead dog props. That's a true fucking statement. <laughs> uh, no, I did not pick the dead dog prop. I picked something more outlandish when you think about it. Cookie woman? No. Uh, you complained that this is a mask you do not like at all whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So I am not taking the Michael Myers mask. I am taking apparently the exact goddamn replica that Spitz happens to grab and put on for a prank outside the Tower Farm, which is identical in jumpsuit and mask to what Michael's wearing in the goddamn movie. So some straight up Ben Tramer shit going on here. So when someone comes over, we're like, oh man, what is that, the Halloween uh, part five mask? We're like, no, 
that's the Spitz mask, but it is from part five. But he asks if you got a phone number. <laughs> is that a cop out? That might be a cop out, but you know what? I'm gonna allow it. Um, man, yeah, no, because that's you, that's, you know- that's a deep cut. You're like, is that the Michael Myers mask? Yes and no. It is, mm. but it's not the same because he didn't take the he didn't take fucking my, Michael's mask off and put it on himself. Uh uh-uh. uh, that's a so, he went and bought that shit somehow, some way, independently. But it's the exact same goddamn mask. He actually did a better job than Ben Tramer did. Ben Tramer's hair is all fucked up. It's a different color. Spitz here got the identical look of the mask and jumpsuit. <laughs> but it's not you know the what? same because Michael ain't running the fucking around without his mask. Going, Where the fuck's my mask? The fucking <laughs> guy took but it you, from me. You know, in production, they just let him wear Michael's mask. <laughs> so. No, they bought a whole nother mask and they just gave it to him. <laughs> It's not the same mask. It's not the same log, Mike. It's not the same. That, that fucking whole deal is another one of my least favorite horror movie things, too. That whole, like, cop out. out. Of, yeah, the fake out. That's a It's atrocious, and especially and, by 89, it was, like, used a lot. And could you imagine if it was not the cops, if it was Loomis just staking out in front of that place? That kid oh, would God. be, Spitz would be platooned right there. Just, oh, he'd be toast. You would fire a seven out of that six shooter, fill his <laughs> ass full of holes, and you know what? Better movie. Yep, absolutely. Uh, if there was a, if there was an award in this podcast for the worst character possible, it would be Spitz. Oh um, gosh, yeah, I would definitely put that guy in the top spot. Of the franchise so far as my most disliked character. Yeah. And I I wonder, because we don't hear from him or from Tina, her character, doing conventions or anything. What are the what are those folks doing today? I should have asked Tamara Glenn when we saw her, like, how is that guy that played your boyfriend? Because he fucking sucks. <laughs> I'd like to meet him and tell him he fucking sucks. Yeah, but like <laughs> ask him, like, hey, I'm gonna go drink forty eight beers in this evening. You worried about me? I would give him 20 bucks for an autograph for sure. No more than that though. <laughs> 2250. <laughs> yeah, ta- yeah. Oh, all right, I'll spring for the tax so you get an even $20 off the Venmo. <laughs> oh, good god. So, that being said, we've picked our props. We've uh we played our game. We've done the Amazon one star reviews and we've uh ranted and rambled about the film for a while. So, find us on all of your random social media platforms find us on youtube at 3b video comment on this podcast on patreon or wherever the podcast is podcast. out there everywhere wherever you fucking get it we're on them and uh five stars you know let us know the prop that you pick for the prop game um i suppose we should probably get going because after all there's a lot of movies out there and somebody's got to watch them so why not us right take me but spare my friend She's a virgin.